Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, and we are going to be doing something a little bit different this week on the channel. So, um, you guys know that I make games, like we played through Grunge, which is one of- which is the first game that I ever made. Um, recently- not recently, I'm sorry, I think it was like about a year ago now, there was a gay western jam where people were making games to kind of celebrate the release of Brokeback Mountain, and to kind of also recognize how like, um, Kind of recognize how, like, queer culture has kind of been intertwined with, like, cowboy culture, like, uh, it, it, just historically speaking. Um, so this was my entry to that particular game jam, to the Gay Western Jam. It was called Tumbleweed. It's a very short little game, and I didn't really have another game that I wanted to play. And I was kind of like, you know what, why don't we just check this one out? So we'll just check out Tumbleweed. Uh, fair warning, there is a conversation about intimate uh, partner violence or domestic violence. So if those are things that are triggering for you, it's probably best that you do not watch this video. Um, there's nothing like particularly gory, but there are things that are being said that are a little bit, um, you know, a little bit rough. But Tumbleweed is set in a fantasy kind of Western world where people are still able to sort of explore and it centers on an enemies to, uh, enemies to lovers romance. Cause I was just like, Ooh, I love that trope. So we're gonna, and I've never, but I've never actually written it before. So I was like, we're going to get into it. So here we go. I wonder how broken this one is. <laughs> On the other side of this desert, there must be something else. On the other side of this life, maybe I'll find myself. I am Tumbleweed. I'm only Tumbleweed. And I'm ro rolling away. I'm rolling away. This is um, not my own poem. This is actually something that I found online because I knew I wanted to call this Tumbleweed. But I wanted, I knew I wanted to call the game Tumbleweed. I just didn't know. I wanted to kind of choose something that was a little poignant and profound that would kind of explain why it was called Tumbleweed and I came across this poem and I'm like this is a really wonderful poem um but unfortunately the person who wrote it like they didn't leave their name so I have no idea who they are so if you're out there somewhere a person that wrote this one poem uh please let me know who you are uh, so I can properly give you credit because I think I just linked to your poem in my game description but I would love to know who you are this is a really lovely poem honestly okay Eight gold teeth, tarnation. That'll fetch a good price at the blacksmith in Bus Busboro. What kind of bandit got eight gold teeth in their mouth? A bandit who steals other gold teeth. And puts other people's teeth in their mouth? I don't have any answers for you, Diego. That's mighty unsanitary. Mm-hmm. Just disgusting. Makes me want to throw up in my mouth a little bit. Actually, I think it... <laughs> Keep it together. We've got two days to make it back to town and collect the bounty. Yes, sir. So these assets, by the way, are going to look a little bit fuzzy and a little bit weird because they're actually um, assets for the previous RPG Maker program. Uh, I made this an MV, but this is made with assets from VX, I think. So I sized these up to use in the game because someone had made a perfect Western pack and I was like, oh my god, I've wanted to make a Western for so long. So yeah. Chuck? Mm-hmm. Are you just going to freeze me out forever? Be grateful that I am. That I am. Being frozen feels a lot better in this heat. That wasn't even clever. Never claimed to be. Ooh. Chuck, damn it. You're going to keep me waiting out here forever? Chuck? What are you making? Take a wild guess. Beans? Damn, how'd you guess? <laughs> I really just want a steak. Eggs. Something other than beans. Fiber is good for you. All these are is fiber. I've had the runs for days. That's disgusting. Well, I asked you to get cornmeal while we were in town. Why didn't you? I forgot. And look, if you're going to complain about what we're going to eat, then you should be the one buying the food, not me. Or you could do it right the first time. Diego sighs heavily. Chuck? Yep. After we get back to town, I think I'm going to take my cut and head to my sister's. In Rothsbury? Yep. I'd love to see one in it, but I was thinking that we'd head to the Central Prairies first. I've heard that they've got a cockatrice problem, and we could... No. Chucky. I'm saying I want to go back to my sister's on my own. This isn't working, and it hasn't been. And you've been mighty, mighty ornery with me, and you have every blessed right to be, but... You understand what I'm trying to say? I suppose you're right. So I'll go to Rossbury, then. Alright. What are you gonna do? I don't know. You're angry with me? Well, of course I am. Well, what do you want from me? This has been impossible. Chuck bites his lip and looks at the desert ground. You know I regret what I've done, Chuck. I've told you a million times. I won't tell you a million more. Help yourself to some supper, if you even want any. 
It's all just beans. I'm so sorry. Chuck stares at the fire as the arrow disappears into the tent. He begins scratching at his pant legs and hips, shuffling uncomfortably. These damn pants. I thought I told that washerwoman to go easy on the soap. As he's scratching, he hears the soft crinkling of paper in one of his pants pockets. He reaches in and pulls out a wrinkled, slightly damp map. His eyes widen. You can't convince me to change my mind, Chuck. If you want to do that, you rightly should have changed your attitude. <laughs> this dialogue, I friggin' love it. It's so corny and western. <laughs> Look at what I found. It's a map. The map to Cold Mountain. I thought I lost it, but I guess I had just stuck it in the back of my pants and forgot all about it. Really, Chuck? Where'd you find it? In my pants pocket. Chuck, goddammit, I told you to check your pockets for that map, and you nearly let a washerwoman ruin it. I know, I'm sorry, but I found it now, and we can finally do it. The last mission. We? I'm the one who found that map, Chuck. You're just the one who lost it. I know, I know, but if you want to run all the way up to Cold Mountain, you're going to need some help. After we investigate this, you can do whatever it is that your heart desires. Go to your sisters, or if there's any treasure, or if there's treasure, retire on the coast of Eodia. Well, we've had. I know it ain't working anymore, but please, you're all I got when it comes to pulling this off. One last job. Then we say our goodbyes. Alright. One last job. Thank you. I'm gonna get some rest, Chuck. Alright. Sleep well. Thanks. Whiskey. Dry. We don't got no whiskey. Um, alright. What about scotch? All we got is moonshine. <laughs> All right, I'll take a glass. Chuck taps his fingers nervously against the countertop. <laughs> what? You actually thought that there was whiskey here. Or scotch. I'll be damned. This is a saloon. <laughs> In the middle of the iron saddlebacks. All they make out here is moonshine. You got something to say about my moonshine? Relax, Sal. It wasn't saying nothing that ain't been said before. What's your name? Charlie. No, it ain't. Huh? Men like you going around with a name like Charlie? <laughs> Not only are you a greenhorn, but you're a soft one. I don't know what you expect me to tell you. What's your full name? Charles. Last name? Ain't got none. I'm an orphan. Your name is Chuck. Chuck? Chuck. Tough enough name for a tough enough place. And what's yours? Diego Riviera. Now Chuck, have you ever been in the ravine? The ravine? This place is mighty famous for the views across the Southern Southern Ravine. Especially at night, when you get a chance to look at all the stars. What say I take you out to the ravine? I'd like that. Hmm. Get your hands off of me! Chuck is immediately caught by two bandits. He wrestles with them and they manage to take away his pistol. A couple of bandits are grabbing onto Diego. Let go of him! Or what? What are you gonna do? The bandit punches Diego in the gut and he collapses to the floor. Chuck continues to fight the bandits holding onto them, kicking and them and punching them, but he can't escape their grasp. Diego! Diego! Knock him out already, you dumbasses! Hey there. Wake up. <laughs> oh, of course you'd be behind this, you rat bastard! Why are you trying to hit me? Don't do that. <laughs> Where's Diego, Scully? Where is he? I don't know where Diego is, and honestly, that's what I'd like to know myself. Pull it together! You've been unconscious in the sun for God knows how long. No sense in working yourself up just enough to pass out again. Where is my horse? Chuckles. Calm down. I won't ask you again. I'd much rather just conk you over the head. I take it you saw my men last night. The hell do you mean asking me these questions? Of course I damn well did. Your goons took Diego. They're not my goons anymore. You best start explaining what the hell is going on instead of talking in circles. Alright, well, Diego decided to buy off my men. I don't know with what and I don't know why, but he bought them off. I found a map in my lair leading to this here campsite, and that's how I come I was able to find you. What? Your love is pulling a fast one on you, it seems. Huh? Oh, for the love of the spirits in the sky, please pay attention. I know you ain't that bright, but you're not completely stupid, are you? Why would Diego do that? That's what I was hoping you'd be able to answer for me. Why would Diego buy off my men? I don't... <sighs> the map! The map, the map, the treasure map! Shit! Words, slowly. I gave Diego this treasure map I thought I lost, leading the cold mountain. It was old, really old, and I thought that maybe it'd be the last adventure we'd ever have. What? The last adventure? You dying? 
God damn. This is Scully. He's um the other protagonist. He's the du- duo protagonist? H- however you say it. No, we decided that we would go our separate ways. What? Why? Not that I'm not happy. You two are a royal pain in my ass. Every raid I planned, you spoiled. Every mission you intercepted. I am well aware. Yeah, if not for my men being missing, will I be having a celebration right now? He took Dusty. I need to get her back. Whatever the hell kind of treasure he has, he can keep it. But I'm getting my dang horse back. Oh no, we're going after that treasure. We're? You plan to just sit in the desert all by yourself? You expect me to go with you? Yes, why? Are you too proud or are you too stupid to come with me? You won't last more than six hours in this heat. Fine. What's the plan? With the two of us, it's probably going to take about two days to get to Cold Mountain, but we'll want to stop over in Jasper first, pick up some supplies. Supplies? It's Cold Mountain. So, it's going to be cold. (laughs) Oh. Try to keep up, Chuckles. My patience is wearing thin. I'm fitting to foot... I'm fitting to put your little old boyfriend six feet under by the time I catch up to him. Trust me, I'm going to have a hard time not doing that myself. Scully has joined your party. His name is Scully. Thus, the two rivals, because he's half skeleton. He's like a half skeleton monster person. Thus, the two rivals set off across the vast desert. Chuck, his arms wrapped around Scully's waist, tried to comprehend the betrayal that he had suffered. And Scully, stoic as ever, tersely directed his mare. Their journey wouldn't take them long, but they soon ran across another unexpected problem. Oh god, are you bandits? Please, we don't want any trouble. What happened to the bridge? We don't know. Looks like this is the work of our guys. There's a lapel pin here underneath one of these floorboards. The insignia is mine. You make your men wear pins? Better than branding these bastards like cattle. Please watch your language. My children are present. Do I look like you give a rat's ass about your children? <laughs> Scully, knock it off. You're scaring the little ones. Don't you worry about him now. He's just a grouch. We're gonna find a way to get us all across. This is the only bridge for miles. That's why they destroyed it. Then we're gonna repair the bridge. Hmph. <laughs> How do you exactly think that we're going to do that? Let me think of something. Well, there's wood right here. I love this door. It, it got broken. Can I go upstairs? Nah, I ain't headed up them stairs. This place is falling in disrepair. I probably fall right through one of the steps. What does this say? It's a note from the soldier that mans this post. Read it. Yo, if anyone comes to this post, do not freak out. I met some guys here who gave me drinking money if I let them hang here for a few hours. I'll be back by tomorrow-ish. Feel free to cross the bridge. Ted, you're a rat damn moron. <laughs> Planks here look like they're straight enough to make a small crossing over the bridge. Hi. I got us here, Chuckles. You better come up with a plan. I'm working on it. Minna is such a beautiful horse. Hello. I see you've got a covered wagon, but no horses? Our horses ran off. It's been a bad day. You and me both. Lay down the planks. You think it's going to be stable enough? That's going to be a balancing act. Well, Midnight can jump this no problem. We can help everyone else. Oh my god. I can't do it. I'm too scared. You can do it. I'm right here. I won't let nothing happen to you. See, you did it. Weren't that hard, was it? Good on you for being so brave. Oh, so cute. Come on, Mama. You can do it. Hey, you gotta be careful. You alright? Yes, sir. Thank you. Y'all have a cover from here? Yes, sir. Thank you both so much for your help. Weren't no problem. Glad we could help. That 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 horse left the fence. It's fine. So Scully and, K- and Chuck continued on their journey. By noon, they made it to Jasper. Shh, good girl. She okay? She's been running hard in this heat all day. We ought to give her a break. Kick a few pints back at the saloon before heading out again. Sure, we wouldn't want to get in sick or nothing. Just a few hours should be good for enough for her, right? Should be. I nearly forgot. I cut these up yesterday for Dusty. She like carrots? She does, but be careful. She tends to bite people she doesn't know very well. Scully trails off, watching in sun silence as Chuck feeds Midnight. She nuzzles him and he laughs. Aw, she's such a sweetheart. Go ahead, girl. Have as much as you want. Oh no, you don't have to. Drink up. You need it. Oh, also, he reaches into a bag and pulls out a bag, setting it on the table. That's wonderful dialogue there, written by yours truly. I'm not ashamed. That's sun slime. Rub it on your face. You look like a lobster. I really look that bad? Doesn't it hurt like hell? 
I think I'm used to it by now. Alright, well, you hungry? You don't have to. I know I don't have to, but I'm saying you don't want to kill your boyfriend on an empty stomach. People at the other table are freaked out. <laughs> They're like, oh shit. You got something you want to say to me? I didn't think so. <laughs> Scully, don't go scaring them. I'm not scaring anyone. They need to mind their own business. You said something pretty dang alarming. That's why they're eavesdropping. E alarming? They don't even know the whole story. Hell, I don't even know the whole story. What happened between you and him? I don't... Huh? I'd rather not say. Oh, you found out. You found out he's got a woman in Charville. Oh, what? Remember when I raided your campsite a while back? Six months ago. Last time I saw you, found some letters to some Rubina Merkel. Rubina? Oh, hell, that's not what you were referring to, is it? Damn him. Damn him. Chuck takes a swig from his beer and pounds it down on the table. No, he snuck out to a brothel about two months ago. Oh. Ordered a man and a woman to go to bed with him. Wow, how expensive was that? Blew half of our money? Shit. And I only found out when I was trying to pay for supplies in the next town over. I thought it was you somehow, and he told me what happened. He admitted to it? In front of a shopkeep? Son of a bitch! Yep, honestly, I wouldn't have been mad about it if it hadn't been so expensive. And if he just talked to me, asked me first, maybe we could have talked about it, but... Since then, well... I've been mad with him, and I guess he just got tired of me. He told me last night he wanted to go with sister, so I brought up this last job. Well, you get first crack at putting him in the ground. I don't want to kill him. What? Why not? I just don't. You have to make an example of him. No, I don't. So what? You're going to let him get away with it? Well, no, I'm going to return the favor, but I'm not going to kill him. This man cheated on you, stole everything you had. Killing him ain't the answer. Ain't going to make me feel better. I don't like killing men as it is. I met him when I was 16. Ten years I've been with him, and ain't so much as looked at another man. He gave me his own last name because I didn't have one. The third year we were running together, the jobs were so far and few in between, that's all he had to give me. Medina. His last name. Oh my god, but I said in an earlier freaking thing that his last name was Riviera. Oh, ignore it. It's fine. You don't put someone under after they give you their last name. He gave you his last name, but he never married you, right? No, we never married. Ten years and you never got married, but he gave you his last name. Yep. Then you gotta ask yourself what's in a name. Hmm? Why wouldn't he marry you? What kind of value is in a name? Plenty of value in a name. Besides, you think a marriage means something? I do. You do? I would have taken you for a romantic skull. I'm not. I just got a good head on my shoulders. Sure, sure. So why do you feel so strongly? You married? You don't seem like the type and you don't wear a ring on your finger. I was. Once. Long time ago. Once? I was 16 when I first got hitched to someone in my hometown. We were together a year before he passed away. I'm so sorry. He was sick most of his life and I knew before marrying him that he wasn't going to make it too long. But it didn't matter to, to me, as long as we were together. <laughs> well, we were happy. It was our big dream and we got to see it through. A marriage is when two people come together, yeah? And they look at this gruesome world and they find a path and they say, well, let's walk it together. Walk it together till we hit the end of the line. What's your point? It's a commitment. It's showing that you care enough about that person to protect them, feed them, provide for them for the rest of their lives. In sickness and health, in good times and bad. To be faithful in the face of temptation, it means something. With all due respect, words don't mean shit. You can still go out and do all these things with men, women, whoever, married or not. It's actions that matter. Exactly. And look at the actions he took. Oh, shit. He's been giving you scraps. He's been intentional about it. And you're loved every minute of it because you want to pretend like you don't know any better. I don't... Listen to yourself. Defending him. Look at what he's done to you. And you know why he did it? Because he knew this is how you react. Damn. That was rough. You think you know everything, but you don't. You didn't even know your own men were, were, were fixing to leave you. And you act like I'm the dumbass. That wasn't what I was trying to tell you. Yeah, well, what were you trying to say? That you can do better and that you deserve better. I know that. I don't need you to tell me that. And I'm not killing him, all right? I'm not killing him. Okay, we ain't killing him. Whatever you say, Chuck. But I'm maiming him. At least a bit. <laughs> Scully. What? I'll just cut off an ear. Maybe the end of his nose. Kneecap him. Do what you want. Come back inside. Have another beer. Then we'll buy the supplies and we'll get going. Scully? Yeah? I'm sorry. <laughs> what for? Why? For what I said about marriage. It ain't bullshit. It's really sweet. Thanks. 
What was his name? Emeril. But I called him M. What you got? Beans? Beans, cornbread, and jerky. Jerky? Damn. You gotta eat a well-rounded meal, given what we're going into tomorrow. Tent set up? Yep. Let me fix you a plate. What kind of jerky did you get? Black peppercorn. Yum. Thank you so much. I didn't want to bring this up again, since this is the first time I've seen you smile since earlier today, but I want you to know tomorrow. You may say that you don't want to kill him, but he might turn a gun on you. You can't trust him. I know you know that, so I'm hoping you're prepared. I'm not laying down my life for him. I know. Good. Good. What's our plan? I don't know. Not gonna know until we scout the place. Besides, you don't gotta worry about that. All you want is your horse back. Your fangs, your money. You can skedaddle. I got business with Diego. But you'll be outnumbered. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Nothing I haven't been before. I'm not leaving you. You're the one who's taking me there. You don't owe me anything. Yes, I do. So don't try to tell me otherwise. Your nobility is annoying. Your lone wolf nature is annoying. I never claimed to be one. You act like one. <laughs> and you know what? You're not. You're soft. Am I? Yep. How am I soft? When I was crying outside the saloon earlier, well, you didn't tell me to stop. Why would I tell you to stop? Oh. I guess it's just that... Well... He tell you not to cry? I'm never gonna tell someone not to cry. Now, I might tell them to get their shit together, but not to stop crying. Especially not in your situation. You and I have been competing against each other for years. Of course you think I would be a real bastard. That was just the nature of our relationship. But not anymore. So, you get to know more of me and I more of you. Yeah. Can I ask you something? Hmm? Your face. I thought for a long time that it was scarring, but it's not, is it? <laughs> no way. What? You thought I didn't naturally have a face like this? Damn, who could get half their face torn off and live? I didn't know any better. I just thought it was some really cool scars. No, I'm afraid the answer ain't that simple. My mother was a skeletal. Really? Wow. Yep, my father hailed from Zabu. Was in the Navy. He met her at a port stop. Zabu. Lovely place. Fishing town, right? Trading port now. It's grown up a bit. Gets bigger and bigger every time I go back. I heard that the water there looks like aquamarines, and there are diamonds in the sand. <laughs> yeah, nah, it's just a very clean beach. No trash, no dumping. They pride themselves on making sure everything's clean. And your mother and father? Still together? Nope. My mother returned to her tribe when I was still at Dappers. My father raised me. He still lives there. That's nice. So you visit him? When I can. I send him money. Make sure he's got enough to live on. That's nice. See, I'm glad you think so, because he just yaks at me to get an honest job. What made you want to be a cowboy? Why not just want to be a fisherman? Well, after him passed away, I just didn't want to be in Zabu anymore. Even the sea reminded me of him. So I just bought a horse and made a name for myself. Besides living in that town, people never lacked me. I'm much better out here. Much happier, even given the current circumstances. Where are you from? Um, Yiki. Little town south of Slater. Ugh. Yeah, that's pretty much how everyone reacts when I tell them I'm from Yiki. Most people who know it hate it, myself included. Passed through there once to get to the mines. Had to take out an infestation of slimes. Brutal country. It was. I grew up in the orphanage. Sometimes I had to go into the mines to earn my keep, so to speak. Try to run away, but I couldn't get out. They'd bring me right back. So how'd you get Dusty? Squirreled away my funds, hid money from the nuns, bought Dusty at the market, and rode away. Haven't been back since. So... If you were raised in the orphanage, who named you Chuck? The nuns? Seems a little odd. My given name is Charles, and I went by Charlie. But Diego, he told me to call myself Chuck. Why? So that Charlie made me too soft, and I was already a greenhorn, so... Hmm. What? Nothing. I feel like I've said enough today. If I say any more, you're bound to throw the coals from this here fire into my face. I know what you're trying to say. Good. Then I don't have to say it. Now you want some jerky? More cornbread? Please. Burr. So, essentially, like, there's kind of this beginning where you kind of think that it's really sad that they broke up, but it's kind of revealed that Chuck had no choice, was kind of pushed into this relationship, and gave up parts of himself, like, little by little, the longer that they were together. So, like, he called himself Char- he was named Charles, but- Call himself Charlie until he met Diego, and Diego's like, no, you're not going to call yourself that anymore. You're going to call yourself Chuck. Took away his name, took away kind of his right to, like, process emotions. Um, so it's kind of like, it, it was an abusive relationship in that sense, and Chuck just didn't really understand it. Chuck's kind of coming to this understanding now. Chuck? 
Sorry, am I f fidgeting too much? Scully places his hand on his cheek. You're freezing. Didn't you put on the long johns about you? I did. I'm still cold. I have poor circulation. Scully nestles closer to Chuck, wrapping his arms around his body. Chuck stiffens, his body tense at his touch. But Scully keeps sleeping, and slowly Chuck drifts off. You ready? As I'll ever be. Then let's go. Nothing? We've been here for two days and still you're telling me there's nothing. We've searched high and low. You sure that this map he gave you is worth something? I see nothing here but ore. Not even gold ore. Bronze and copper. Coal. Ain't gonna make it rich. Shut up. I know it is. Did anyone dig out that clasp wine shaft like I asked? No, it's far too dangerous. Dangerous? I remind you of what's dangerous here. Me when I don't get what I want. You best shape up right now and dig out that tunnel if you know what's good for you. Okay. Which one's Dusty? Is this my horse? Chuck kisses Dusty's nose. Hey girl. Hey sweet girl. I'm here. We're busting you out. Dusty nudges Chuck nervously. He begins to untire for a repose. Scully stares down the mine shaft, pistol in hand. Are you going after them? I will be, once you get out of here safely, that is. I told you that I wasn't going to leave you. Chuck, don't argue with me. You need to get out of here. I don't understand how they brought the horses down here. Those stairs can't handle that kind of weight. There must be another way. We better look for it. Fast. Let's follow these minecarts and see if we can't find a way out. Well, well, well. Isn't this a surprise? Scully cocks back his pistol, aiming it at Diego's head. Step aside, or I'm gonna paint these walls with your brains. Why you gotta be so gruesome? Honestly, Chuck, what possessed you to team up with this brute? I've been gone two days and you're already that desperate. Maybe when you abandoned me in the desert, stole my horse, and left me for dead? You didn't exactly leave me with a lot of options, Diego. After all the horrible things that you've done to me. I'm sorry, the horrible things that I've done to you? Do you forget how you've treated me? I don't. You've been giving me the cold shoulder for months. Not to mention you can bitch and complain about everything that I do. I made you the man you are today, Chuck. And I make one mistake and this is how you treat me? I... Not to mention abstaining from sex like you're some goddamn nun. Hey, Scully, just so you know, it takes forever to get into his prissy britches. Look, we have two ways that this can end. You can kindly let us leave, or I put a bullet between your eyes. Make your choice. Please, Diego. I don't want him to hurt you. Hmm, fine. Feel free to pass by. Diego, stop! Stop! Let go of me! Let him go! You think I'm playing when I say I'll drop you? Try me, you bastard! Diego presses his pistol against Chuck's temple. Chuck whimpers in his grasp, trying to twist away, but his entire body is quaking in fear. Diego, if you fire off a shot in here, this whole place is gonna come down. I can't risk letting anyone else know about this place. I'd rather bury us all now than take my chances. Diego takes aim at Dusty, pulling back the trigger. Chuck screams and leaps up, pinning him back against the wall. The shot fires and ricochets. Dust Dusty whinnies in distress. Chuck punches Diego in the face. Diego tries to aim at Scully this time. He pulls back the trigger. Chuck! Slowly, Diego points his pistol again at Chuck. You need, you need to leave me here. No way in hell. Scully scoops up Chuck and places him on the horse. Chuck, I'm getting this out of here. Oh, sh oh no! I don't remember. I don't remember. It's over here. It's over here. It's over here. We're getting out of here, Chuck. Hang on. Stay with me. Stay with me, okay? Scully begins applying pressure to the gunshot wound. Blood gushes out. He grimaces, tears a piece of cloth from his shirt, and presses down hard. I'm right here, I'm right here, and I'm gonna take right care of you. Scully, shh, 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 don't talk. Save your strength. Thank you. For what? Chuck closes his eyes. Chuck, Chuck, no, you gotta stay awake. Please, Chuck, please don't do this. Why would you do this? We needed that money. Get off my ass. We can just take on another couple jobs and we'll earn it back. That's not the point, Diego. The point is you did this without my permission. That's extremely unfair. I don't need your permission for shit. You don't owe me. You got it? Do you understand me? Yes. Yes what, goddammit? I understand you. Knock it off with a crying. I said stop. Stop crying. See? Was that so goddamn hard? You... you hit me. Did you think I had any other choice? You just... goddamn it. Maybe I brought this all on myself by staying with him for as long as I did. Maybe I was the problem. Ten years of my life I spent with someone who used me, cheated on me, abused me. I was so desperate for some resemblance of love that I was willing to do anything. Letting him hurt me. Forgiving any wrongdoings. Change my name, and look where it all got me. It's not your fault. 
Don't blame yourself for wanting to be loved. Don't blame yourself for not knowing what it is. No one taught you any better. All you were doing was your best. You were going to lose in one way or another. It was just a matter of time and fate and patience. It was out of your control and you shouldn't blame yourself. He taught you how to be a tumbleweed, to just go along with everything that he said. But you aren't a tumbleweed, Chuck. I'm sorry that I didn't love you enough, that I didn't value you enough. But I promise you, if you keep fighting, I will be better to you. Alright. So basically, Chuck has a conversation with himself where him, his self is just basically like, I'm gonna love you more, and I'm gonna, like, help you to try to kind of establish your own boundaries. But don't blame yourself for the fact that, like, you gave up so many of those boundaries because you just did it out of desperation. Um, you did it because you craved love your whole life and you never got it, so you, you couldn't have known any better. There you are. You've been out for two days. Doc fished the bullet right out of you. You've been fighting off a mighty nasty fever. I think you just broke it, though. How did? I rounded up Midnight and Dusty and I rode us back to Jasper. You managed to stay conscious, barely, until I got you into the doctor's house here. Chuck reaches a hand up and touches Scully's face. He smiles warmly. Scully leans into his touch, squeezing his hand. They told me you weren't gonna make it. <laughs> Ain't no thing. I haven't shot before. Really? You don't remember shooting me in the leg a couple years back? Oh, <laughs> relax. I'm just teasing. I mean, it didn't even hurt that much. You just sort of nicked my calf. I'm sorry. For what? Diego, I just... I had to shoot him. I know. Don't apologize for that. You did what you had to do. Besides, you lost your man. They had no loyalty to me anyways. Good riddance. What are you gonna do? What do you mean? Well, you're gonna have to start over, right? Have you thought about what you want to do? Not really. Probably round up another crew. You should do that. Once you've healed up, we can... No, not we. What? I'm not leaving you here to recover all by yourself. This dock is nice, but docks are quacks. But it's gonna take me a long time. I already know that, and I don't care. I don't need you to take care of me. I know you don't, but there's a doctor here and a nurse. They probably do more good for you than I can. But I ain't leaving. I need to learn how to take care of myself. With a gunshot wound? Chuck, no. Look, I understand where you're coming from. There's a lot of history between us, most of it being bad, but it's not you. This is just something I need to do for myself, okay? I've got some things I need to take care of. Thank you for everything. After I get better, we'll see each other again. Are you sure about this? I'm positive. Hey, look at me. You're a good man, a real good man, who risked a lot to help me even though we didn't have to. I was just in for the treasure. That ain't the truth and we both know that. Promise me, Chuck. Promise me that you'll come looking for me. I will. I promise. Six months later. Look at this place, Dusty. So gorgeous and modern. I really love to try the stone crab rice and could I have a glass of water? The waitress nods. No way. What? You unhappy to see me? They tightly embrace each other. Been a while. Indeed, how's the old wound? Heal up, mighty interesting scar. I'll bet. What have you been up to? Roaming around, visited Diego's family, gave him the news. Did you tell them everything that happened? I thought that I would, but even after everything he did, I just couldn't bring myself to tell them. It just felt too cruel. Yeah. And you? Did a couple odd jobs. Had to come back home to take care of some things. How's your father? Um, dead. That's why I had to come back home. He got sick. Scully, I'm so sorry. No, thank you for asking. But my father lived a long, fulfilling life. I'm glad that I was able here to share his final moments with him. You look good, Chuck. Really good. You're not as sunburned as the last time I saw you. <laughs> thank you. You don't look half bad yourself. You got some place to stay while you're in town? Uh, no, I was planning on shacking up at an inn somewhere. Rooms are all full this time of year. Fishermen from all around the world take up residencies in these inns to work up for the summer. Oh, whoops. But if you didn't mind it, there's room in my cottage. I wouldn't want to impose. You wouldn't be imposing. That's why I invited you. Then yes, I'd like that an awful lot. Running water. What a concept. I know. Makes you realize how the rest of the world has to catch up, how much the rest of the world has to catch up, don't it? It does. You know you don't have to clean those if you don't want to. You made food. It's the least I can do. Scully wraps his arm around Chuck's waist as he continues to do dishes. 
I was worried I would never see you again. I told you that I'd come see you. Yeah, but how are you ever going to know when I'm being Zabu? I didn't. I was planning on spending some time here laying low. Maybe try to find your father and wait for you to come back. You do that? Because last time, last time we saw each other, I had to work on myself, learn how to be on my own. Oh, so it wasn't me? I mean, you said it was, but my feelings would be hurt if it was actually me. No, not at all. I just needed to take some time for myself, is all. Make sure I was doing things for myself and not because someone else wanted me to do them. I came to find you out of town of my own volition, Scully. Scully lifts Chuck under the counter. Chuck wraps his arms around his neck and finally tastes his lips for the first time. Oh, this is this is animated. You can't touch it. It'll glitch. I animated this. Aggressive. You all right? Better than all right. Chuck kisses his jaw, fingering the buttons open on his shirt. I'm all yours tonight, cowboy. Scully scoops Chuck into his arms. Chuck laughs as he's carried to the bed and delicately laid against the mattress. You sure about this, Lo? I've never been sure of anything in my life. He welcomes Scully into his arms with another kiss. On the other side of these tears, there's a place where I am strong. On the other side of these fears, I'll find somewhere I belong. On the other side of my mind, I'm anything but me. On the other side of my dreams, I'm rolling, rolling free. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, so that's the end of this story. So, yeah, they end up together. It's cute. It's enemies to lovers. It's a very, very short little story. Um, I'm surprised that it actually was taking as long a time as it did. Um, but yeah, it's a very short story, so yeah, this was a really cute- I kind of want to explore- I have so many other games that, like, I want to make, but, like, I would love to explore this world again and maybe make this, like, a bigger game, um, in the future, but that would be a long time in the future, and I probably would not end up building an, an RPG Maker. I'm trying to move away from RPG Maker. I'm actually trying to get into more, like, Unity. Because Unity, I think, is going to have a little bit more... I know Unity isn't, like, really, like, highly looked on. But Unity, I think, is going to have more flexibility. Because you can build in different kinds of engines. There's different kinds of games. Different kinds of graphics that you can put in. And so, I'm just really interested in building another type of game. And RPG Maker is great. I recommend it for when you're trying to get started. Um, but, uh, eventually I think that it is a good idea to, in fact, move on from RPG Maker. Unless you're gonna, like, spend hours of your own time, like, trying to remake all your assets and all your, you know, backgrounds and everything in RPG Maker, parallax map, everything, you know? I've thought about doing that, that, but I'm just like, I'd rather recreate everything, I think, in my own art style for when I'm making games in the future, so... Yeah, so that is Tumbleweed. Let me know if you want me to check out any other games. There are two other games that are related to the grunge verse. So we've got Campground and we've got Roses. If you guys want to see walkthroughs for those games, do let me know. If you like this video, please leave a like. It really does help the channel out. Also consider subscribing to the channel. And when you subscribe, be sure to hit the notifications bell so you get updates on when I upload future episodes. Without further ado, thank you all so, so, so much for watching. Bye! Special shout out to Patreons AceWolf741. Deep Dive Dylan, Brian White, Caleb Putnam, and Robin Harper.